fractions, adding and subtracting them. We're going to get away from the multiplication and division. This gets a little more interesting because I have to have a common denominator to be able to do this. Now, sometimes it'll be nice. Sometimes I'll give you one that's common already, like we got here to 1 through 3. In that case, once your denominator is common, you leave it alone. So it's not like it's 3x plus 3x is 6x. Please leave it alone. And I just add up the numerators. But I still have to pay attention at the end to see if I can reduce it further. 3x. Close. 3 over x. Because 9 over 3 is 3, but the x is in the denominator. So I can't necessarily keep them together all the time. That's one of those little detail things we've got to play with. Now sometimes there may not be a whole lot I can do. My denominator alone, 2x minus 4. Now could I take this one step further at least and you know, maybe I don't look ahead and I say, well, I can take a 2 out of here. And so I take a 2 out of there. But I get to the end and I'm like, well, those aren't identical and there's nothing to cancel the 2 with, so I'm done. Would it be okay if I left it in the first form? Yes. But for a lot of you, you're going to get to a lot and start saying, yeah, I'm done. And circle. So it's probably better to go ahead and take that factor out, if you can, just to stay into a good habit. Then, then we go back to yesteryear. Well, not yesteryear, yesterday, actually. On this next one, yesterday. are my denominators the same right now? Yes, but they're not in the same order. Okay, so no, since they're not in the same order, because this is negative 9, this is positive. This is positive x squared, this is negative. What do I have to do? Yes, I can take either one of these. And I can pull out a negative to be able to change the signs to where those would be the same. Now, here's, here's the problem, though. Because now, for me to have these be the same, I need the negative to be out of my way. So here's how we're going to handle this. This negative, let me rewrite this. This plus that's here, I'm going to distribute that negative through up above so this becomes normal. So these become identical because with that negative there, that's not happening. So when I do that, I'm like, all right, let's see what I got here. I've got <coughs> 2x plus 11 minus 2 plus x, because I distributed the negative through over this stuff. Now let's see if that gets me anywhere here. 2x and x is 3x. 11 minus 2 is 9. Hmm. hmm. Looks like we won't be doing number 5. We're going to take up all that space. Can I do anything up in the numerator now that I've simplified it? Take out a 3. So if I take out a 3, what do I have left? x plus 3. x plus 3. Wait, OK? Let's wait. Can I do anything to the denominator? Yes. OK, talk to me. OK, but what is it? Try to put your finger on it. Okay. Okay. When I pulled the negative out here, for me to be able to add these, these denominators have to be identical. <coughs> when I pull the negative out, what's inside the parentheses here is the same now, but that negative's messing me up. So what I did was I took that negative and I swung it up to the numerator because now these can be the same then. Once I did that, I distributed the negative through here. So this stayed 2x plus 11. But then when I distributed, I got a negative 2 and negative times negative positive x. Then to get over here, I just combined like terms. 2x and x is 3x. 11 minus 2 is 9. And that kind of brings us up to where we're at. 
we factored the top, and then somebody said, yes, we can do something with the bottom, but what? Difference of squares. Difference of squares. So I square x to get x squared. I square 3 to get 9, and it's plus minus. So you're like, so you can even cancel once you do this. Yes. Once I get the two fractions added together, if there's something I can do to cancel, I can and need to do that. The whole idea of a common denominator is just to get the two fractions together. Then we break it down. So sometimes it may just be a little tweak. Let me kind of block this in here. Sometimes it may be a little more significant, but I'm going to even teach you a little visual trick to use with these to make sure we're doing them right. If you have denominators that are un unlike, okay, every single set of parentheses that are different need to be part of your common denominator. So in this case, my least common denominator would be x minus 5, x plus 2. I need them both. So here's how I would build the fractions. I wouldn't shortcut this unless you were really, really feeling comfy. LCD, least common denominator. So I'm going to copy my LCD for both of these fractions. And as you get more comfortable with it, you may be able to skip a step here, but not yet. And I'm also going to rewrite what I have so far up in the numerator. Notice I'm leaving myself a little bit of room to work with. Because now we're going to play the match game. They're like, ooh, it's a game. So here's how this works. Are we okay with where the LCD is coming from? No. <laughs> okay. Any quantity, any set of parentheses that are different in the denominator has to be part of the common denominator. Because if it's not, I'm going to be missing a piece. So if they give it to me in factored form already, that should be easy to work with. So I just use that in the denominator, and I keep what's up here for now. So for right now, I'm just going to work with that first term. So I look at it. Just look at the denominators for a second. I have this x plus, excuse me, this x minus 5 already. Whatever I can't check off, whatever is missing in my old denominator coming to my new one, I need to add into my new numerator. Because here's what I'm doing. I'm not changing the value of this at all. I'm just changing the way it looks. Because if you notice, if this was my whole problem right now and I said to reduce it, you'd say, well, I'm just going to cancel out the x plus 2s. And look, I have the original fraction back. But don't cancel right now because we need that x plus 2. So I'm going to build these fractions up. And then I'm going to swing, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the next part. I already have the x plus 2. And I'd literally like check these off because they're going to start getting larger. I didn't check off the x minus 5. So that becomes part of my numerator. Because again, if I were to do my normal canceling and cancel these, I'd have the original fraction back. So I haven't changed its value at all. I just changed the way it looked. So once I get here, now life should become a little bit easier. Yes. Keep that denominator. Don't start canceling stuff. I'm going to simplify the numerator now. I'm going to distribute. So my 2x is going to distribute through. So 2x squared plus 4x. And this minus here, I'm going to act like it's on my 4. So I'm going to pretend I'm distributing a negative 4 here. So it'll be like negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. So just distributing on that step. You, of course, probably know what I'm going to do next. I need to simplify my numerator. And we're almost there, actually. So I look and I'm like, okay, 
I've got 2x squared. My positive and negative 4 cancel each other out when I'm combining like terms. Plus 20. At this point, yes, if I can do anything else, like for instance here, take out a 2, I need to do that. And at that point, I can't cancel anything else, I'm done. If I could, I would. It just depends. Oh, my gosh. Okay. What's that? Did I change it? Oops, thank you. Math class is about getting some of you to think, which is harder and harder these days when everything can be answered on your little phones and everything else like that. People do not have problem solving skills. That's why there are so many issues between, look at your politicians, they don't know how to think anymore. Look at your basic people in school districts and stuff, they don't know how to think anymore. So basically it's getting to a point where I tell people this itself if you're going on in mathematics, you'll start to see more of the applications. But for immediate purposes, there's not a lot except I'm making you pay attention to detail. So if some of you end up working someplace where you've got to use your hands and it's kind of important that you have detail, like if you're building a building and you're not paying close attention and that wall you build is at an 89 degree angle instead of a 90, that, that would be a problem. Yeah, buildings falling down. Some of you think I'm exaggerating right now. I'm not. One size a little short. It is, yeah, yeah, issues, issues. So we're working on your attention to detail and your problem solving. This is kind of a where's Waldo thing, except it's not quite as fun. So Yes, it's going to make your brain hurt. We're working out your brain. Make your brain a well-tuned machine. All right, six, we're looking at that going, ooh. No, we are not going to just not do it, no. All right, look at our denominators. Can we factor them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's this going to become? Which one? Oh, the first one. Six. This one. Two and two. Okay, two and two. Now here's one thing I'm going to suggest. This is x plus 2 squared. I'll explain why that's going to be important here in a minute. True. My second denominator is a difference of squares. So it's x plus 2, x minus 2. Now I said before, every unique, every different set of parentheses has to be part of your LCD. Here's the one part that gets a little tricky. Well, I see that x minus 2 is unique. Then I go to put x plus 2, and I sit there and I think for a minute. There's three of them. Well, that's not unique, but this one has two of them within one. I need two of them then. This is the only time I'll use something more than once. Like if this one would have been x plus 2, x minus 3 or something like that, I'd only use one. The only time you use a set more than once is if you see squared in there. Once I do, <coughs> and yes, we can go into over towards 7 because we're just going to make sure we have room. So here... My LCD is x plus 2 squared, x minus 2. And we're going to start building our common fractions based on that. But I do need to rewrite in there. Say that again. We're going to in a minute. Yes. Because what we're going to do now is the same thing we did on the last one. We are going to, and I'm even going to just really black this all out so we can be thinking just about what we've got in the factored form here. If I look at that first fraction, I've already got the x plus 2 squared part. I don't have the x minus 2, so I need that. We're just building the puzzle. Whatever pieces are missing, we're putting them in. Once I get that one, 
I swing over, and I say, okay, what do I have? I have the x minus 2. Yeah, I have one of the x plus 2s. So I need Just one, of them. one more. Because if I think about it, if I were going to cancel, I could cancel this one with one of these, but I'd still have one left. I'd get back to the original fraction that I have. So, once we build, now we got to go simplifying. So I'm going to come up here because I just want a little more room to work with. That denominator is not changing now. It might get to the very last step, but otherwise, don't touch it. Can't cancel yet. This needs to get foiled out. Okay, I'll help. This will be x squared minus x minus 2 when I foil it out. Whether you box it, foil it, whatever means necessary. And then again, with this minus in the middle, put it with the 2. So it's like distributing a negative 2 through. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then we're going to see what we end up with. And again, for my step skippers out there, I wouldn't suggest doing that right away because something's probably going to happen when you do. So let's get things combined. Negative x and negative 2x is negative 3x. Negative 2 and negative 4 is negative 6. Okay, so I've simplified my new numerator. I haven't touched the denominator. So now, let's try to factor the numerator. Oh, okay. Is there two, and three. two numbers that I can multiply to get negative 6 that add to negative 3? No. I'm done. Okay. You won't be able to simplify every time. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. So it is. It's it's a big thing in just dealing with. It can be sometimes. It can be. No, no need to freak out. Oh, not you. Oh, okay. Well, let's hit up eight first. Oh, just work with me here. No, I'm going to make this one fit. I will, I'm going to stay within the box on eight. All right. Let's do some work here. Can I do anything? Can I do anything with my first denominator here? Okay, I can take out an A. What would that leave me with? A minus 2. Okay, I'm going to thoroughly cross out my old denominator now. I don't even want to think about what it used to be. Difference of squares. And this is a difference of squares. So A plus 2, A minus 2. We can cancel it now. No, no canceling. I know. <laughs> my, okay, so my LCD. What do I see that's unique within each part? A plus two. Okay, I see an A plus 2. I need an A minus 2, but I only need 1 this time no because I don't see any squareds anywhere. And that A that's just hanging out on its own also needs to be part of this. So that... LCD becomes my new denominator for each of these, and I need to go fraction building. Yeah. And I absolutely realize it is a pain to keep rewriting this stuff. I do, I do, I do. Trust me, when I'm sitting there doing the homework too, I'm like, ah, I need to shorten this, but it, there's not really a way to do it well. Once I get those rewritten, again, even cover up the other part just so you're not even thinking about it, and say, okay, I've got the A, I've got the A minus 2, 
whatever is not checked off needs to be part of my new numerator. Once I have that one built, everything's checked off and situated, I'll swing over, say, okay, let's see. I got a plus two, I got a minus two, I just need the A. And I'm like, all right, let's do this. Now, this is one of those times, it's not really long, I think you can get this all situated in one step here. So here I've got 10a, but I'm going to be subtracting 5a. So 5a, uh, yeah. 10 times 2 is 20. Okay, let me put that in. See what happened when I skipped a step? Um, so I've got 10a plus 20 minus 5a. 10a minus 5a is 5a. And then the 20 is going to come down with it. So again, if there's anything you can still do, take out a 5, do that, A, because it puts you into a good habit, and B, you never know when one of these just miraculously all of a sudden I'm going to be able to cancel something more. Not in this case, but we could run into one where I need to. Actually, no, 9 is not going to take forever. 9 is where I'm going to cut off and we're going to finish up tomorrow. Okay, let's factor these denominators so we can get this situated. What's my first denominator look like? Oh, I have factoring? Yes. 4 and 1. Negative 4, positive 1. Negative 4 and positive 1. Okay, that's gone. What about my second one? Two and no, no. Negative two, positive no, no. Negative two and positive one. All right. So those are set. LCD, I need one of everything. I'm going to the store and saying I need one of everything on the shelf. X minus four, X minus two. And X plus, X plus one. one. But only one of them. That's right. We are thinking the same. All right. Uh, fraction build. And don't forget the part that's there already. Exhausting. Exhausting, yes. So once I get my new denominator rewritten, I can go into comparison mode. and start checking off the pieces that I have already. And if I run out of old pieces and I still have things that are unchecked, those end up in the numerator. Swing it over. Got the x minus two, got the x plus one, need the x minus four. So again, distribute make sure that in that second one it's like it's a negative 3 that you're distributing through. Be careful with your signs. Don't get screwed over just because you went too fast and missed a sign. So let's see, 2x. This is, this is going to test your patience. So I get that distributed, I get my like terms combined. Take out the two. And 
and finally we get to one that I can cancel something at the end. When I get to the very end and I factor it, at the very end, if I can cancel, go it. That's the time that I can do it. Oh, I don't even want to be part of the game. Did you get tired of teaching? He loves math too much. No, it's thinking. Thinking keeps your brain sharp, no matter. No. All, all this writing over the years, hands strong. The rest of me, not so much. Hands, and yes. Okay. <laughs> so what we'll do is tomorrow we'll end up finishing this up. But you, you are not off the hook. You are not off the hook. No, no, no. Those actually are going to go faster than these do. I'm telling you, it's strange. It doesn't seem like it's humanly possible, but it's true. So, all right. Here's the part. I'm going to write the whole assignment on here, but I'll tell you what part you're going to be capable of completing right now. I'm going to explain the factoring warm-up thing in a minute. Better not be homework. better not be The students you give teachers homework. It's how they It's called grading. They're going to do every homework assignment in grade. All in one day. Do tomorrow. Uh-huh. I, I already, I don't mind putting this on here. I already put in 65 hour weeks, so, um, mm -hmm. so. Now, that's the entire assignment from this section. Did I lose my four? Why would you install the Yeah, I like that one. You literally just told him more. Yeah, but I don't Come on, Hardy, you like the Oh, I lost my 46. What the freak? And your 16 through 20 even. Nobody said anything about 12. No, I like this one better. No. I wrote it down. I know. Oh, there again. Less homework. What did I? That's what I did. I wrote down the 565, but then I wrote down Monday, yesterday's assignment through the problem numbers. That was smart. Okay, this is the one we want to do. Now, out of these currently that you have, you are capable. Verse 2. No. You are capable up to here. Is that 26? 26, yes. We're good up to there. Tomorrow we will finish the notes on the back to let some of you know that have been wondering what's up with the factoring practice thing that I put out. Is that for tomorrow? No, that is to get you some more practice at factoring. If you're having issues, it is worth extra credit Done. if you do it. Okay, the factoring worksheet that was up front. If you do.